I have never used my phone as my go-to vlogging setup, ever. What is up you guys? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna talk about what is the best vlogging setup that you could have. And along the way, I'm gonna do something really fun, which many of my subscribers have been requesting for this. I'm gonna share with you what are my vlogging setup that I've been using throughout my years on YouTube. So it's gonna be a fun one. Let's go. Now it is true that the best vlogging setup varies from each individual. Some people might want to go for convenience, some people might want to go for quality, and some people would just not care and go with whatever camera is in front of them. I have never used my phone as my go-to vlogging setup, ever. Now that's not to say that I've never vlogged with my phone before, I have. There are times where I forgot to bring a battery or a memory card on my camera, then the best option or the only option I have was the phone. I mean sure a phone camera will work well for some of you guys, Nowadays, phone's quality has improved compared to the times when I first started. You can easily mount a light or have an external microphone on your phone nowadays. I'm not saying you should not vlog with your phone, but I wouldn't. <laughs> and just for you guys, I'll just show you what a phone quality looks like. This is me vlogging with the phone. The audio is from the phone and uh, what? Well, look, I could on the light. Yeah, I can switch on the beauty light and yeah, I think it works great. It's alright. The followings are the few questions that you need to ask yourself before deciding on your vlogging setup. And number one is your camera and your lens. What kind of camera are you looking at? What kind of lens do you want? And I think importantly, what kind of video quality you want. Would you want to shoot in 4K? Would you want to shoot in 1080p? Would you want to shoot at higher frame rates? Would you want to shoot in low light? These are the kind of questions that you need to answer. Number two, the audio. Do you want an external mic? Do you want a professional microphone? Do you want a wireless microphone? Or do you not want a microphone at all? Remember, audio is one of the most crucial part in the video. You can have bad video quality, but to have good audio quality, it's still a pass. The worst thing is to have good video quality and you have terrible audio. For some reason, people cannot accept bad audio. That's just the way it is. Number three, portability. Do you like a small versatile setup or would you like to go for full frame, better quality and heavy? What kind of tripod are you using? Selfie stick, gorilla port, tripod, Speaking of tripod, here is a carbon fiber tripod that you might be interested from Yulanzi. Let's go with the unboxing. This is the MT49 light stand or you could use it as a tripod. No worries. At the back of the box, we have some examples and instruction. Inside the box, we are greeted with a nice little bag. Very nice red finish Yulanzi bag. Inside the bag, we got the carbon fiber tripod itself. Now I must say, I love this red finish. It looks so futuristic, it looks so cool, it looks so badass. Very very light, very very beautiful. On the top, we have a screw that you could mount your light or a ball head joint. It has this beautiful rotating locking mechanism. And you also have the option to remove the top for a selfie stick or a monopod or a boom mic stand. And here we have the Felcam F38 ball head. Now just in case for those of you who don't know what a ball head is, this is a ball head joint for you to mount your camera to the tripod. As you can see, the ball head rotates and you can have multiple angles. Now why I love this ball head joint is that it has a hot shoe mount at the side. This is very handy for you to mount a light or a microphone. Now the amazing thing about the F38 is that it has this quick release mechanism. Simply just press the button on the side and you get the quick release of your camera. Now at the side here, there's also a locking mechanism. You just have to pull it and twist it and there's no way you could release or mistakenly drop your camera. As you can see, the F38 can mount on any existing tripod you have. Here is the splendid articulation that it can do. I totally could use this as a selfie stick. <laughs> all in all, very good quality, very well built, and you can be sure I will be using this ball head. In the past, I've never been a big believer of carbon fiber tripods. I never thought that the weight matters. But a big shout out to Yulanzi for sending me the MT49. Now I've been using this carbon fiber tripod for the last couple of days and I must say that the weight difference really matters. <laughs> yes, now it matters to me because I'm getting older. This here, this is my old tripod. It is a professional grade tripod but it is heavy and I can tell you honestly, 
I have never taken this out. Well, I probably like use this tripod like three times just simply because it's heavy. It takes a lot of space on your bag. When you put this on your backpack, man, you feel the weight. Guys, I'm holding this carbon fiber tripod with two fingers. And I can tell you the weight difference is easily four times lesser. Now, one thing good about the MT-49 is that it's not only a tripod, it is actually a light stand. I would just demonstrate this quickly and I'll show you how high this can go. And I'm pretty sure it'll be taller than me. Okay, it's already it's already taller than me by a foot. If you want to get the MT-49 or the Falcom F38, then links in the description below. Oh, one more thing I like about this tripod is that it's so quick to deploy and so quick to keep. The GoPro was my first ever vlogging camera. And the thing is, this is the GoPro Hero 5, so it's a newer version. In the past, when I first started, I was using the GoPro Hero 3 Session. Yes, the cube one, which I gave it to Shaq eventually, and now Shaq is using it. But hey, this is what I started with. So what we have here is the GoPro Hero 5 footage, and in the past, the Session, it was a lot more worse. It's not very dark here, but as you can see, it struggles with low light. Now, if you were to come to the studio and everything is all well lighted up. Now, one thing good about using a GoPro is that it's very versatile. You can use it underwater, under rain, no problem. It's small, it's tiny. You can take it anywhere. Now, in the past, you can't put an external microphone on the GoPro. Now, with the newer GoPro, it's a lot better. But still, up to today, most GoPros are very bad at low light situation. And why I say low light situation is that you have to be always prepared that you're not always going to be vlogging during the day. Sometimes you might be going to indoors or if you're vlogging at night, you can forget about using the GoPro. So another thing that I don't like about the GoPro is that it has this wide angle feel and everything on the sides, it's distorted. Now, yes, I could fix it in post-production, but you gotta deal with this wide angle thing, you know, where everything is curvy on the sides, on the edge. <laughs> oh, this is what I call the Casey Neistat setup. I think it was like season two or three. Yeah, I started using the DSLR for vlogging. Now this here is the most popular vlogging setup during my time when I first started and everybody wants to be Casey Neistat and everybody wants to start vlogging with a DSLR. Here we have the Canon 70D with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens with the Joby tripod and an external microphone. I did not have the professional one so in the past I was using the Rogue Video Mic Go and look, it works. It does the job. <laughs> and now we have come to the Casey Neistat setup. As you can see, it's a lot better in low light and of course this is a very old setup. It's very heavy. <laughs> I find it heavy till today. Now, as you can see, the 10 to 18 millimeter is a wide angle setup. Slightly better than the GoPro. However, the problem with this camera is that it does not have slow motion. It is bulky. It is tough to bring it everywhere with you. It is heavy. <laughs> And the thing is, the reason I used the 70D is because this was the camera that I started off photography with. And back then, I didn't want to buy a new camera. And since I have the 70D, then I might as well use it. But why I had the 70D was mainly for photography, it wasn't really for vlogging. I just thought like it works on both ways. I would say you would be mad vlogging with this setup today. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't last long with this setup. I think it was probably a few seasons before I got the G7X. Now this is the G7X Mark II. Now you have the Mark III, which allows you to have an external microphone. But in the past, I was using this, this microphone on the camera itself. Now why I decided to change to the G7X Mark II from the Canon 70D is that because it is small, it's compact, it is easy for me to carry out with me every single time. And when you're vlogging, you want to be able to carry a camera with you every single time. Well, the Canon 70D was huge. So going to places is a bit tough, especially when I was starting vlogging at the beginning. I was very nervous and I feel very awkward bringing a big camera out to places. <laughs> Today is a different story. I don't care. Another reason why I moved to the G7X is because there is slow motion. The Canon 70D only has 30 frames per second, so I can't do any slow motion on the camera, whereas here, I get 60 frames per second. So that's also a reason why I jumped to this camera. And plus, also around this time, I was also enjoying a lot of Yoon Olsen vlog, so he likes the slow motion, so I just wanted to add slow motion on my footage. That's where I was inspired to do slow motion videos. Now, this is a very interesting setup for the G7X. I was using the GoPro 3-way selfie stick. Oh, I have to do is this and release here and yeah there you go this is how I was vlogging for the longest time 
and then a flip out screen. Now the good thing about a flip up screen is that when your eyes are looking at the screen, it's not as bad as looking at the side of the camera. So let's say if I'm looking at the screen on this camera, it would be here. This is where I'm looking at and you can see that my eyes is on the side. Yeah, I always have this habit of looking at the side and looking at the screen because I want to make sure that my exposure is correct. So sometimes when I do this, you don't see my eyes looking at the sides. Right now, I'm looking at the sides and you don't know I'm looking at the sides. So I'm not going to move my eyes and you guys see where my eyes are. You can't tell! I know, you guys are impressed with the low light capability of the G7X, right? A lot better than the 70D, right? The reason of this is because it has aperture 1.8. Whereas the Canon 70D, I was using a 10 to 18 millimeter f4.5. So it's not a very fast lens compared to aperture 1.8. This is why I keep telling you guys, the wider your aperture is, the better your low light footage is going to look. You can see why I love the GoPro 3-way selfie stick. At the bottom of the selfie stick, you got this tripod and boom it stays on the table just like this <laughs> i would say that the g7x was the camera that i use more than any other cameras that i have so far and for a long duration of my vlogging days it was the g7x i've used this camera so much i banged it up so much <laughs> it's impressive that it's still working sometimes when i'm going on a joyride riding on the e-bike i still take this out with me and it still gives me a decent footage till this day now, of course, there's a newer version of the G7X right now. You can get the Mark III, which has a microphone input. This is probably the camera for most of you guys. If you want something small, compact, and still perform in low light situation, then yes, go for the G7X. Because to me, I feel like the most important thing is to have a camera that you could shoot during the day and during the night. If you take a GoPro, for example, you can only shoot it during the day. At night, it's completely hopeless. If there's one camera, if you ask me, if you're a beginner, then just start off with the G7X Mark III because it's worth it. Um, disclaimer, so today we are only going to go through with the camera setup that I use for a long period of time because cameras like the RX100 Mark IV, the Sony, I got it. I thought like I could do super slow-mo with this. I ended up not using this much. Trust me, when you use a Canon and switching to other cameras, uh, you won't be used to it. Just simply because the manual system on the Canon is so much easier, the color science is so much easier. Man, do you know what I use this Sony for? It's got all those camera product unboxing you see, it was all shot with this Sony. I just mounted it on the top of my overhead rig here and yeah. So all the vlogging setups that I mentioned today are the vlogging setups that I've used at least for a few season which means at least a year or more than a year yeah and then from there we have moved to the Canon M6 Mark II now I can't say that this is my favorite vlogging setup but this is probably the vlogging setup that I use the longest uh, I've been shooting with the Canon M6 Mark II for nearly like two to three years I think it's three years easily the reason I got the M6 Mark II is because it had 120 frames per second. And then I thought that I would use 120 frames per second for the most part, but no, I didn't. I do use it on and off, but most of the time it was always 60 frames per second. Just simply because it's easier to edit and access on the camera. Now what I like about the M6 Mark II is that it's a flip up screen instead to the sides. Now because I was so used to the G7X having a flip out screen, I decided to go with the M6 Mark II. But I had a problem. I didn't have a place to mount the microphone. So I had to get a cage for the M6 Mark II to mount my microphone on the sides. Now having said all that, I love this baby. I've been using it so much, I've dropped it, I smashed it. Um, it's still alive, it's still going good. And of course, APS-C sensor with a good lens is good for low light. Most of my night adventure, this was it. We are going to better professional grade footage right now. <laughs> well, definitely not professional yet, but a lot more better, a lot more better video quality. I'm now using the M6 Mark II with the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Now, as you can see, I'm looking at the flip up screen right now and you can't really tell the difference. Like my eyes are still 
centered, not to the sides. <laughs> definitely, definitely a lot better footage now. Let me just set you guys up here. The reason why I decided to move to the M6 Mark II is because I wanted interchangeable lens. I wanted to be able to control what I film. And if you're thinking of going for a good quality setup, then this setup would definitely be one of the best. An APS-C sensor with a wide aperture, good in low light, good in most situation. If you want to go for a camera that has interchangeable lens, which gives you more options to buy new lens and fit for different situation, then definitely go for an APS-C setup because APS-C setups are a lot more cheaper than going full frame as of today. And why I say as of today, because technology always changes, you will never know. One day full frame would be a lot more cheaper. <laughs> Let's go to full frame. And you guys, today, this is my vlogging setup as of 2022. It is the Canon RP with the Sigma 24mm f1.4 microphone. It is going to be the Rogue Video Mic Pro Plus. And yes, I'm using the carbon fiber tripod with the Falcom F38. It has a little hot shoe mount at the side of the ball joint so you could add a light. And I do not need the cage like the M6 Mark II. But um, hey, weight wise, it's comparable with my old setup. And of course, I'm vlogging now with the full frame camera, which you guys have been seeing all throughout this season. The only beef that I have with this camera is that the screen is on the sides, which means my eyes will always be looking at the sides. But I'm pretty sure now I could just look at the lens. I'm trying to have like this good habit, you know what I mean? Now, I certainly do not expect everyone to have a setup like that. I think this setup is a little overkill. I think it's a bit too much, it's a bit weighty. Right now in the market, you could easily get an APS-C setup, a very affordable APS-C setup. But if you're someone like me, if you're someone who don't mind the weight and you want to go for quality over convenience, then yes, this setup would work. I tell you, this ball head from Falcon, I love it. <laughs> It plays a part, guys. Anyways, guys, Yulanzi, they have lots of camera accessories. If you want any of their camera accessories, links in the description below. Go check out their website. They have ton of camera accessories. And go and browse and see what you need. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, it all depends on which vlogging setup you're comfortable with. You want to have a setup that you would take out with you every single day. You want a setup that you will always bring your camera with you, it's in your bag. For me personally, in my case, it will always be the RP, the full frame camera, because I'm so used to it. Like at the beginning, I was very uncomfortable just uh, bringing the 70D with me. It's huge, it's almost the same size as the RP right now. Yeah, I did not feel comfortable vlogging with the 70D in the beginning. Today, now that I'm more comfortable and I don't really care about the weight so much, then that's the reason why I got the full frame. And of course, if you're a beginner and you want something small or lightweight, let's say if you're a female vlogger and you want to have something that would just fit in your purse, then of course the G7X will come to play. If you're someone who do outdoor activities or outdoor sports or underwater or diving, then of course you have to go with the GoPro. <laughs> Only during the day. And of course, if you're somebody like me who wants to be in more control and you want to play with interchangeable lens, then go for a micro four-third camera or an APS-C camera. All in all, bottom line, don't do this. No, it's, it's not even an option. Anyways, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Please subscribe if you haven't, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's your ideal vlogging setup. Or whatever questions you have, let me know in the comment section. As always, if you like my video, please remember to hit the like button and share my video if you think this video is helpful to any of your friends. I will see you in the next one. You guys keep smiling. See ya! Side note. Insta360, yes, I have the Insta360, but it's not a vlogging camera. I never use this to vlog. It is only for B-rolls. Creative ways of making B-rolls. Let's get a thumbnail. Okay, you know what? You're not going to be included in the thumbnail. My old Canon 70D. Just to let you guys know, I have no problem with the M6 Mark II, guys. It is one of my favorite camera. Hands down. Maybe I should do a stressful look. Like, so many options. <laughs> the best camera is the camera that you take out with you the most. So if the phone is the one, then I feel bad for you guys. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving so much shit to the phones. I think it's because I've used cameras so much and I'm so accustomed to the quality coming out from the camera that every time when I see a phone image, 
it's it's turned off guys uh, really it's a turned off camera qualities have improved throughout the years they are getting better and that's not a knock on any phone cameras but i think it's the sensor size that matters and that's the reason why i go full frame but you know what that's just me and you don't have to be like me yep these are all my vlogging setup throughout the years i can't believe i vlog on this <laughs> uh. Those were the days. <laughs> Huge, big setup. And it's weighty, guys. This body itself, it's heavy. You know what? I didn't even give you my conclusion answer. Okay, if I was starting vlogging today, this is my setup I would get. This is definitely the setup I would do. Today. M6 Mark II, Sigma 16mm, F1.4, Vigin VL120 LED light, Rogue Video Mic Pro Plus mic. Yep, this is my vlogging setup if I were to start YouTube today. Okay, I gave you an answer. It's not like I didn't.